This is Valley News Live at 4. We start with breaking news this afternoon. The Supreme Court has stopped the Biden administration from enforcing a requirement that employees at large businesses wear a mask and be vaccinated or undergo weekly COVID testing. The court's conservative majority concluded the administration overstepped its authority by seeking to impose the vaccine or test rule on businesses with at least 100 employees. More than 80 million people would have been affected. At the same time, the court is allowing the administration to proceed with a vaccine mandate for most health care workers in the U.S. New information on a scary situation out of Moorhead where police say several people were taken in for questioning after someone fired a gun inside an apartment complex. That happened just before 10 this morning in the 1800 block of 30th Avenue South where police say one shot was fired but no one was hit. However, police do say they've identified a victim who says that they were shot at. Officials say after the gun was fired, the people involved ran to a different apartment building across the parking lot and hid out while police went door to door searching for them. Our reporter on the scene saw three men handcuffed and put into a squad car. At this time, police say there have not been any charges forwarded to prosecutors and no one has been booked into jail. All around town, people are gearing up for some snow. Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson joins us now with the latest. Hutch? Yeah, time to make those uh, preparations here as changes will begin. And by the end of the night tonight, we're going to have snow flying right now. That's not taking place as we take a look at our home of economy camera. That's in the Devil's Lake area. Here's a look at what we're watching for, however, as we head into the later hours. We have a winter storm warning for all of these red counties. That's going to be the main core of the track of the storm from north central North Dakota straight down into southwest Minnesota. And there could be some bands of locally heavy snow. That's surrounded by the blue, which are winter weather advisories, lighter snow. And this does come with some wind. Here are the impacts that you need to know about as far as snowfall potential goes. Where you see these dark blue colors here, some heavy snow by the morning drive. There will be impacts here in the Devil's Lake Basin, James River Valley, and they'll be significant for that morning drive. The snow will just be getting started. Southeast North Dakota and Lakes Country will have some impacts, but not nearly as bad as our neighbors out to the west. Now by the afternoon drive, look at this. That band of heavy snow works its way through and continues into the early evening hours. A band for Fargo for the Devil's Lake Basin, four to eight plus right through the kitchen here and into the Otter Tail County area, Western Otter Tail County as well. Here's the core though, southern parts of the Devil's Lake Basin, James River Valley, Cheyenne River Valley, including Valley City, straight down through Gwyn or Lisbon, uh, Winemere, five to 10 inches, and asterisks are never good on Hutch's map. That means we could see some pockets of a foot or more of snow. Stacy, cool. right now things are pretty quiet. Get out and enjoy. Make sure that snow blower starts right up for you. Get that <laughs> shovel waxed and ready. I have hour by hour details on impacts for you coming up here in just a few more moments. All good things to do. Thanks, Hutch. And it's a good idea to keep that VNL weather app handy for forecasts right at your fingertips. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL weather in the App Store. We now know the name of two people hurt in a rollover on Highway 2 yesterday. North Dakota Highway Patrol says 74-year-old John Gustafson was seriously hurt and 89-year-old Laverne Gustafson has minor injuries. The driver lost control of the SUV heading east on Highway 2 near Niagara. Troopers say the roads were icy. The vehicle slid into the ditch and overturned. Both were wearing their seatbelts and treated at all true for their injuries. Tomorrow, the community will gather to remember seven members of the Moorhead community who died from carbon monoxide poisoning. The funerals for the Pinto Hernandez family are happening at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in South Moorhead at 11 a.m. They open their doors to host the service, saying it's the right thing to do for the family and the community. Today, President Biden met with Senate Democrats to push Congress to pass voting rights bills, but it now faces a steep uphill climb with two key party moderates once again voicing opposition to changing Senate rules. Skylar Henry reports from Capitol Hill. President Biden came to Capitol Hill to discuss voting rights legislation with Senate Democrats days after publicly calling for a change in Senate filibuster rules, which require 60 votes to pass bills. I hope we can get this done. The honest to God answer is, I don't know whether we can get this done. While I continue to support these bills, I will not support separate actions that worsen the underlying disease of division infecting our country. Before the president's visit, moderate Senate Democrats Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin reiterated their opposition to doing away with the filibuster. We need changes to make the Senate work better. 
not getting rid of the sub filibuster. Senate Republicans praised Sinema's speech after weeks of warning Democrats not to change the rules. That would not extinguish the fires of red-hot tribalism in this country. It would throw gasoline on them. Senate Democrats had previously set Monday's Martin Luther King Jr. holiday to pass legislation. While these latest developments make that highly unlikely, party leaders say they'll keep fighting. We are going to do everything we can to pass these two bills. The motion is passed. Thursday, the Democrat-controlled House passed the Freedom to Vote John Lewis Act along party lines. It consolidates bills which would establish national election standards and reinstate key provisions previously stripped from the Voting Rights Act. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Former Presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama have come out in support of President Biden's position on the filibuster rule. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is refusing a request to appear before the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. In a statement, McCarthy said he has nothing else to add and accused the committee of not conducting a legitimate investigation. The committee thinks he can provide more insight into former President Trump's mindset that day. Prosecutors have added dozens of charges against the man accused of driving his SUV through a Christmas parade in a Milwaukee suburb. Darrell Brooks Jr. was previously charged with six homicide counts in the November 21st killings. Now prosecutors have added 71 additional charges against him, including multiple counts of reckless endangerment, hit and run involving death and battery. New court documents allege Brooks ran over people at the parade after he knocked them down and carried others on his hood. More than 60 people were hurt. An independent review recommends probation for the police officers who pulled over Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry weeks before she was found dead. Police in Moab City, Utah pulled the couple over after receiving a 911 call of possible domestic abuse. The investigator says the incident should have been classified as domestic violence and Petito should have been arrested or at least cited. Instead, the officers ordered the couple to spend the night apart and drove Laundry to a hotel. The lead investigator also said it's impossible to say whether Petito would be alive today if officers treated the encounter differently and added the blame for her death rests with the person directly involved for her murder. At times like these, many families plug in space heaters to get warm, but the devices lead to thousands of fires every year, including a deadly one in New York this week. Michael George shares information to keep your family safe. An apartment building fire in New York this week took the lives of 17 people, and investigators say the flames were started by a space heater. New York firefighters did a demonstration to show just how dangerous the appliance can be. A blanket placed on top of a heater ignited in less than 30 seconds. In less than two minutes, the entire room is filled with smoke and flames. When that space heater is on, that is at least three to five feet away from anything that would burn. Safety officials say it's also important to plug the heaters directly into the wall, not into an extension cord or power strip. All too often, if the space heater itself doesn't go on fire, the power strip or wiring will cause a fire. When buying a heater, experts advise getting one that will automatically shut off if it tips over and make sure it's certified by a lab. This UL code signifies a product has been tested and certified. Make sure that there's some basic safety uh, protections on them like a grid on the outside of it to protect child or pet from getting too close. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says it's also important to check cpsc.gov for any recalls. Over the years, several heaters have been recalled for overheating. Michael George, CBS News, New York. And that deadly New York fire spring loaded hinges that were supposed to slam the door shut automatically didn't work. A second door also left open and a stairwell allowed deadly smoke to block people from escaping. This morning, the mayors of Dilworth, Horace, Fargo, Moorhead and West Fargo took audience questions at the State of the Cities event. More than 650 people listened as each mayor spoke about their city's growth as well as the challenges they're facing. Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney was asked about the Red River Valley Water Supply Project, a 10 year billion dollar project that will bring water to the valley during droughts. The mayor said he'd like to fast track the project citing this summer's water restrictions as one reason to hurry. This evening, Fargo Public Schools is hosting its State of the Schools Address and Public Focus Group. The event runs from 6 to 8.15 at South High School. Superintendent Dr. Rupak Gandhi will give the address, after which participants will break out into small groups for discussion. They're looking to gather feedback to help plan the future of the schools.
A new bakery just opened in West Fargo where you can find all natural fresh baked food and treats for your pet. Three Dog Bakery can personalize cookies for your dog's birthday or gotcha day. They joined us in studio this morning to show off pup cakes, peanut butter cups and dog food. The goal they say is to cater to dogs prone to upset stomachs or food sensitivities. We have everything from regular cake flour to grain-free, wheat-free, so we can cater to a lot of different dogs with sensitivities. That's the whole reason why Three Dog Bakery was started. And since the ingredients are all natural, all the baked goods are actually safe for humans to eat, too. Three Dog Bakery is located at 465 32nd Avenue East in West Fargo. West Acres has officially purchased the former Herberger's building in South Fargo. It was previously owned by a separate company. The mall posted on Facebook today that they're in the early planning stages of what will happen with the space, but they have some exciting ideas and tenants in mind. They say stay tuned for more details later this year on the transformation of that building. Still to come, mosquitoes, certainly not a problem for us right now, but come summer, you might be interested in a new bait to take care of them. And our big time changes in our weather are starting now. We're starting to see just a little bit of snow making its way into western North Dakota. Winter storm warnings are out there. Make sure you're prepared like this little fella here gathering some food. We'll have details on when it starts, how long it lasts, and how much you can expect in your neighborhood right after this.